Okay, for, the, for you know, as as you guys are, are you know, you, you mentioned that you, you know there's programs to you know research and develop ways of reducing bycatch, but for the time being, right now, um, is it more sustainable for fishermen to keep bycatch um, and and sort of you know I guess sell it to the market or, or or you know keep it for for bait or something, reuse it in some sort of way, whether they sell it or reuse it for their own purposes than to discard it if if the bycatch is especially dead or injured where they they could lead to death and does that happen um so we're beginning to see some communities uh selling bycatch like uh, they're um advertising it as as bycatch and selling right. it as bycatch um so there's kind of becoming a, a niche market for that because people are are seeing bycatch as a huge problem and wanting starting to demand that fishermen keep those fish. But in most cases, um, it's just not economically viable for the fishermen to keep the bycatch. It right. won't bring them money. It's going to take up space on their boat. Right. And then with endangered and threatened species, it you know you can't keep them. It's illegal. So right, of course. In, yeah. in, in the U.S., yeah. it's illegal to keep them. But yeah. in other countries, um, fishermen do keep cetaceans. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes they use them as bait. Sometimes they eat them. Sometimes mm -hmm. they can sell them. Um, yeah, I so guess, uh, yeah, I wasn't thinking more of the endangered. You'd, you'd want to, you know, I, I was imagining as a fisherman and, and, um, and especially, for, you know, legally, you know, I think in Canada it's illegal as well, um, to, to discard, um, or to try and save as many endangered species as possible. And, and, you know, looking at the, all the, the fish and bycatch that's, that's not endangered, um, you know, it, I had conversations with a number of people, non-scientists and avid, avid fish eaters and seafood eaters that say, you know, we tend to only eat certain fish because of, of the, mar like the market value or the status that it gives. But there are a lot of other countries that value other fish that would be considered as bycatch or, you know, quote-unquote garbage fish that, mm -hmm. you know, don't really supply, you know, or don't really provide, you know, good resale value to even keep the fish to, to bring it back. And you almost wonder if, you know, I've always wondered if it if it's better to inform the public that these fish are just as good to eat, you know, so that you can, so that the fishermen can actually keep them and actually make worthwhile. So instead of, you know, they only say they only get 30% of their target species, go back out and they have to get another 30%, but in the meanwhile, they're catching another 70% bycatch and discarding them and ruining it. So it's just, you know, it's sort of a, a, we're going on a tangent here, but that's sort of the thought process. It's almost like, mm -hmm. do we need to be educated as individuals saying, well, maybe not having salmon or not having cod or not having haddock or halibuts on the East Coast, you know, is, is not as bad. You know, having something else that, that comes with that. Is, is actually could be tasty or it could be a different sort of fish and more sustainable. In the, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it is, but it seems like it would be, in theory, anyway. But, yeah, I could get into that, but that might take <laughs> us off in a totally different does. direction. <laughs> yeah, that, that's for another. That's a topic for for another program. Um, okay, so no, that, that's that's fine. So I guess the, the next question, looking at bycatch, is do, how like does the fishing industry see it as a problem? Like, not just pressure from outside, but for them in general. Yeah, so bycatch can pose a few problems for fishing industries. And, and the first big one is it can reduce their target catch. So sometimes, as I said before, bycatch makes up a higher percentage of the catch than the target fish do. Um, in shrimp trawl fisheries, you know, for every pound of shrimp that's caught, you know, four or five additional extra pounds is bycatch that right. they won't won't use. Okay. Um, bycatch species can also destroy fishing gear and it causes the fishermen to you know, cut through their nets um, to try and release an animal or to cut off the lines um, on long lines to, to release an animal that's still alive. Um, and then also it's the, the depredation problem. So a lot of the species that are, are bycatch species, they, they actually eat the target catch Right. And so fishermen bring home less catch right. um, when that happens. So some of it is just, you know, you, you're deterring bycatch, but at the same time you're also deterring depredation of the target catch. Okay. Um, and then there, there are the legal consequences in some countries because of bycatch of protected species. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we have the Marine Mammal Protection Act and the Endangered Species Act, which protects whales and dolphins and um, sea turtles um, from, from taking fisheries. And that can cause legal problems for fishermen because it's 
um, NOAA has to enforce those regulations and they can be enforced through mandatory gear changes um, in the lobster fishery in the northeast. They went from floating lines um, on the bottom between their traps to ground lines to ensure that whales couldn't get underneath and get entangled in the lines. Um, they can also uh, be uh, time area closer, closers for fisheries um, mm -hmm. all the way to like a complete closure of a certain type of fishery. Um, so it, bycatch can definitely have serious problems for, for the fishing industry. Okay, okay, great. So we've gone over sort of the bycatch problem um, you know, and, and, and how it affects the industry and things like that. I want to now dive into uh, the background on the bycatch consortium. Um, how does the consortium help reduce bycatch? Like, uh, can you give me a first, you know, that's, that's going to be sort of the, a question probably later. Can you just tell me, give me a background on, on the organization, when it was founded, how it was founded, and, and so forth? Sure. So the, the Bycatch Consortium was founded with help from the New England Aquarium in 2005. And okay. the aquarium has always been a leader in bycatch research and mitigation technologies um, ever since like the 1990s. Um, the consortium was involved in developing um, hangers in mm -hmm. the gillnet fishery in the North Atlantic. Um, the gillnet fisheries were taking thousands of harbor porpoises. Um, and it was just this problem that they, they couldn't figure out. And so they developed... Um, it's a little device called mm -hmm. a pinger, and um, it emits uh, the sound that the porpoises can, um, can sense, and then it deters them from the nets, and it reduced bycatch very significantly that it's, it's been adopted in many other places around the world. So that was kind of the, the beginning of bycatch work at okay. the aquarium and the impetus for the, the founding of the uh, uh, Consortium for Wildlife Bycatch Reduction in 2005. Okay, and and it, it these pingers just attached to the nets or the lines. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And are they expensive? Um, they're not very expensive, which is uh, important for for use. And um, you know, they're always trying to develop them to have a longer lifespan and you know cheaper right. models and stuff. But um, it is something that is inexpensive and doesn't um, interfere too much with fishing that has a significant di difference for reducing bycatch. Okay, and is it um, mandated legally by governments in, in some cases, like uh, U.S.? I, I think it is. Yeah, okay. That make that would make sense, especially if it doesn't, like you said before, and your sort of the mission is not to reduce the catch rate, but reduce the bycatch rate, so. Yes, so um, you look for technologies that will, you know, the cetaceans will only um, react to the pinger, the fish have no reaction to it. Okay, okay, interesting, okay. Um, now, who makes up the, the consortium? Um, so the, the consortium is five organizations. It's the Blue Water Fishermen's Association, um, University of New Hampshire, Duke University, the Maine Lobstermen's Association, and the Known Lit Aquarium. And we, those are the, the main members of the consortium, but our, our kind of working group has expanded well beyond those organizations. Whenever we have a, a new project, a new technology that we want to develop, we reach out to experts in in the field of you know designing, engineering, right. um, or like experts on the, the species or the area. So we're we're constantly growing. So is the reach worldwide or just within the states? Um, our main uh, the people we mainly work with are in the U.S. because we're working on mostly bycatch. Uh, within the U.S., but as part of the New England Aquarium, there is a um, marine conservation engineering program where we work with similar people outside of the United States on on global bycatch issues. Okay. So it's it's kind of separate from right. the the bycatch consortium, though. Okay. Have you been have has the the consortium been approached by people outside uh, the U.S. sort of? trying to solve the same problems or similar problems or yeah so that's that's actually why we developed the online database of research that um, again you can go on bycatch.org and right. have a literature database of um, bycatch uh, mitigation techniques that have been tested and they are studies from all over the world and all different fisheries uh, lots of different target species and bycatch species 
And so people, someone um, in Brazil can mm -hmm. search the database and say, we're having this problem with the gillnet fishery, and we want to try something to reduce the bycatch of X species. And so they can search the database and see what's been done in, you know, in Maine. And maybe there are similarities um, and things that you can take from, from one place and implement in another place. Okay. Uh, so that's one way we try to... Uh, spread the ideas, and the other is we we often hold um, we also often hold conferences and meetings to bring together people from all over the world to talk about the issues um, and to, to see what's working in, in one area and to see if it's applicable somewhere else. Right. Okay. I'm on the website right now, and I'm just looking at the homepage. So it's bycatch.org, like you said. Um, you know, and, and so right off, right, people, if you go to the if the people go to to bycatch.org, right off the bat, you can see. You know, bycatch reduction techniques database. That's the one that you were just talking about, correct? Yep, and you can use it from the home page, or there's a there's an internal page that you can go to too and search. Oh, you just you just uh, look at database. Is that the the link? Yeah. The okay. And what you can do is, I get you can look at you know you can search by year, uh, before or after a specific year. Uh, you can look at any gear type, uh, any technique reduction technique. Um, bycatch species, which is you know it includes a lot of marine mammals, bony fishes, elasmobranchs, so sharks, skates, rays, and vertebrates. This is great. And then, so what does it actually come up as a PDF, or does it come up more as a citation? Um, it's you get the citation, and you also get a summary of the study because we can't post we can't post all the PDFs. Um, but it gives you an idea of what the study was, um, if it reduced the. Uh, by a catch and what happened to the target catch as well. So then, if if it's something that is interesting to you, you can go to the citation and and, and find it somewhere else. Right. Okay. That's a. I think that's a great tool. And um, you know, because a lot of times, you know, if you just go for a general search in a library or something like that, it'll take you forever. At least here, you know, you're getting you know your bycatch material. Yeah. Um, and and like you said, it's, it's used uh, it's used worldwide. So that's yep. um, that's fantastic. Yeah. The other great thing about the database is um, researchers can also upload their own uh, studies. Right. So as soon as they've completed something, they can upload it themselves. Um, so it sometimes brings things to our attention faster than if we were just searching for it on our own. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Especially with all the, the different types of research being done all around the world. You can't keep up with all of them. Yeah. Um, that's fantastic. So, uh, you know, the organization you mentioned, a lot of the, 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 the consortium members are sort of within that northeastern uh, United States. Um, and so you, but is that the, the, the main core? But are there other organizations like fishing industry organizations or anything else is it beyond that, that general region, the northeast region? Yeah, we've actually, um, two of the, the big projects that we have going on right now are actually taking place in North Carolina and Hawaii.